Hello, everyone, and welcome to uh, Get Things Done, Achieve More in Your Brain. Uh, I am very excited to have with us Omar Aziz, uh, our uh, performance coach and GTD enthusiast. Um, he's been in HR consulting, uh, executive positions um, for uh, uh, over a decade, and he's hosted TEDx talks. Um, he's always a fan favorite with brain users. Omar, hi, how are you today? I'm good, thank you, Shelley. How are you? Good. And of course, we have Matt Caton, our Director of Customer Solutions, um, who's also um, going to, uh, Matt and I will provide our, our uh, two cents and, and Q&A for Omar and uh, have a few different things to possibly show you feature-wise in terms of GTD. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us. And also, I'll be answering the QA uh, that's coming in today, along with my colleague, Chase Ingersoll. And any questions that you have for Omer during his presentation, let us know, and we'll throw a few out to him at the end of his demonstration today. Great. Well, um, today's session is all about um, taking time to create that space, that trusted space where you can actually put things away. A lot of you think of the brain as your reference tool where you're organizing, storing, and searching documents. And that is a key component of getting things done, but that's really only one part of it. In addition to having that place where you can put things away, um, you can actually use the brain to create your own workflows and make decisions on the best way to get things done. And for those of you that are familiar with the GTD methodology, we've got that brain on the screen. It is actually, um, it's a methodology started by David Allen, um, where there's all types of different modes of thinking and methods to help you clear your mind and focus on your priorities. So Omer's brain is very unique in that uh, being a performance coach, in addition to uh, GTD, he'll cover things like Slipbox and, and uh, Smart Notes combined with GTD. So we're really going to give you um, some very powerful methodologies that actually you can use them for the brain. You can actually use them for any tool, but you can see how well they work in the brain. Um, we'll also have this template that we're showing you right now available. And then Omar has generously offered to uh, make his template, uh, a template of what you're going to see today available. So if you know about GTD, that's great. If you don't know about GTD, uh, that's fine as well. Um, you know, this is, it's a very, in a sense, it's simple and powerful. It's really about helping you um, define what's prioritized for you and helping you clear your deck so you can actually get the most important things done. Um, so I think with that, uh, Matt, I don't know if you have anything else to add. I think I'm going to send presenter over to Omer and I can't wait to see what he asked for us. Yeah. Today. Okay, perfect. So. Um, thank you for the introduction. I appreciate it. Just a quick check in terms of volume. I'm okay volume wise. Sounds great. Okay. Yeah. Good. So welcome everyone. Uh, thank you for joining. I've really been looking forward to this. I've been using uh, uh, the brain since about 2008, so 14 years or so. And I've focused on incorporating the getting things done methodology from the, from the very beginning. And then over the last uh, year or so, maybe closer to 18 months, I've been experimenting with um, concepts from from another book. And so what I thought I'd do today is I'm going to share how I do my work and make the, make the examples as, as real as I can while maintaining confidentiality of the people I work with. But I, at the risk of you kind of going down the rabbit hole of how I do my work, I'm hoping that you'll see how I use the brain because uh, bringing in concepts from both getting things done, which is where I started. And then also I highly recommend a book by Sunky Ahrens called How to Take Smart Notes. And so what I've done is I've bit baked in thought types that are ideas from both of these books. And when I take those thought types and combine them with mind mapping, I feel like I've hit this tipping point in my consulting over the last uh, over the last year, which I'm very grateful for in terms of how powerful I find uh, mind mapping. So <clears throat> let me start with the thought types that are that are in my brain. And 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to start creating thought types from the ground up. And the reason I'd like to do that is if you're if you're wondering where you want to start or you're not sure where to start, then I'll 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 start a brand new one. <clears throat> so if I create a new brain, let's call it the webinar brain. And maybe what I'll do is when we're done, after I've cleaned this one up, it will be the one that I'll share. So we call it the webinar brain. And I just need to move, just need to find where it is. Oh, there it is. Okay, so here's here's the webinar brain. So in terms of thought types, there's some concepts I'm going to talk about. I'm just going to find, remind me where the uh, classic dark blue. No need to remind me. There we go. You can tell I have a favorite. Uh, yeah, so, <laughs> my favorite too. <laughs> so here's a completely blank brain, and I'm going to create a thought called Zettelkasten, which is the German word, and it stands for slipbox. And this concept or idea is from how to take smart notes. And then I'm also going to create a thought called projects. And so one thing I do is where thoughts land matters to me so sometimes i'll put an at symbol in front of a thought just so it lines up uh alphabetically now within the zettelkasten i basically have two or three different types of thoughts and i'll get into this in a little more detail when i go back uh to my brain but there's questions there's topics and there's smart notes so there's three thoughts that are belong to the Zettelkasten. And I have found color coding is really, really helpful for me. So when I create thought types, when I experiment with them, <clears throat> I uh, employ color coding right off the bat. So for some reason, questions has this blue feel to it. Smart notes, which I'll talk about a bit more shortly, has a pink feel to it and topics has kind of a brighter blue feel to it. And then if I go to projects, to me, uh, projects have a yellow feel to them. And then underneath projects, there's, and the, these, these thought types I kind of drew from the getting things done methodology. So there's an output, whatever that project is for, it's going to produce something, there's a draft, which is really just uh, the output before it's complete. There's people, there's events, and let's say I'm focused on 2022, there's 2022 projects. So that's how easy it is to create the thought types, uh, at least in terms of how I do my work. Now, right now, these are thoughts. So one thing that I really, really like is I can basically turn this thought into a type. And so, thank you, Matt. So basically what I'm doing is these thoughts I've created are becoming types. <clears throat> and so one feature which is relative, I might, stand to be corrected but i think is relatively new is that thought types can actually be nested so these thought types belong to this thought type so i just want to start with a fresh brain just to give you a sense of from my perspective how easy it is to literally start from scratch and now you know this is like a cooking show i've had one baking in the oven for a while so now let me jump to the one that i've had baking in the oven and you'll see that i have the thought types that I just started to create. So here's the very highest level of my brain. On the left is the slip box and on the right are projects. And so, and you'll see that they're color color coded uh, the way, the way I, I like to have the information become explicit in my awareness. One of the things that I've, uh, that I, that I've learned is that there are, uh, in my opinion, kind of five lists that we use to run our life. And some of those lists have more control over us than we do over them. But there's five, at least from my perspective, there's five lists. The first list is that 
what I call the what bit me list. This is the thing that comes out of the blue, the whirlwind of your job, the unpredictable part, or the whirlwind of your life. You have no choice but to deal with it because if you don't deal with it, there's going to be negative ramifications. So that's the what bit me list. What, what I find really interesting is there's an author by the name of Dan Heath wrote a very interesting book called Upstream where he actually looks at data. And if you're forced to live most of your life out of the what bit me list, your life expectancy is actually 15 to 17 years shorter. So having to live your life out of the what bit me list is bad for your health. Then there's the core dump list. And this is from David Allen's book. And I, I find this list is the first step, is the first place where you're getting away from all of those whirlwind out of my control, what bit me items. And the way David Allen describes this is, what are the things that are rolling around in your mind, taking up your attention? They're kind of, they're unfinished business. And so if you can capture them on paper and, for the core dump list, I actually recommend paper. I don't recommend using the mind map yet for, for core dump. But core dump is that five or 10 minute exercise in the morning, capture on one piece of paper, all the things rolling around in your mind and you'll, you'll find two things. Number one, there's a therapeutic effect because as David Allen says, your, your brain is to have ideas, not hold them. And secondly, the list, looks doesn't look as big as it felt in your mind you you almost feel like you have agency over it then comes the project list this is the list of all the work that you're involved in at the moment captured in one spot and again you know this comes from david allen's book now we're sh shifting over to how to take smart notes so one of the one of the uh, recommendations that Sunky Aarons makes is that you should have a list of questions that transcend any particular work you're doing at the moment, because those questions are going to drive your intellectual and uh, existential curiosity. And then the fifth and final list is what are those topics that fascinate you? For whatever reason you have an interest in them you've been passionate about them you'd like to learn more about them just your fascinating topics so so here's my assertion that you can run your life uh and be very happy in life if you have a healthy uh, set of these five lists so how i incorporate these lists into how into mind mapping how i get my work done i think it boils down to two fundamental atomic units of how i how i do my work um, and the requirement of both of these atomic habits is ideally I'm, my thinking is stimulated when I'm capturing it. So I'm in a state of flow and it's got some relevance to my life, maybe not immediate relevance to something I'm working on, but relevance to my life, which at some point will, uh, fit well with something I'm working on. So the first atomic unit is is the smart note and a, and the smart note is basically <clears throat> anything that you're reading where your thinking is stimulated and it's one idea captured in your own words good enough for public reading which doesn't mean you're going to tweet every single smart note but it should stand on its own captured in your words stand on its own this is the building block of the slip box. The other atomic unit is what I'm calling a task. And so uh, David Allen, the, I think the closest approximation for what David Allen calls this is a strategic next action. Uh, I just, then again, it's entirely your personal preference. I call it a task because my definition is uh, something I need to do that can be done in one go. So conceptually, it's like, to me, slightly bigger than your strategic next action. Now, one thing I will mention about, about the brain at this point is I just created task. And you see that the window on the right is, has immediately populated with interesting information, even though I just literally created this, this thought. And what's happening is I used a 
pretty general term. I'm calling it a task. So the mind map immediately shows you wh what other thoughts are pointing to that word task. So this alone, like you'll notice there's 28 unlinked dimensions. As I look at these, they, they absolutely ring bells. So the mind, the, the mind map is helping me uh, link and collect uh, even even when I'm not thinking about it. And I find that to be very, very powerful. So here are my two, everything I do is built from these two building blocks. Before I go through some examples, uh, Matt or Shelly, any, any questions at this point? Hey, Omar, yes. Um, a couple of questions in terms of, um, and I guess we'll probably get to this. You mentioned the word agency. Yeah. How does the brain facilitate your agency? Okay, so ha instead of jumping to the example I was about to go, go to, let me jump right to that question. And this is a real example uh, from the last couple of weeks in terms of agency. So if I click on 2022 projects, here are all the uh, pieces of work I'm currently involved in. And just being able to look at this list in one spot like this is the first step towards agency. I had a meeting with Val coming up earlier last week, and it was I think it was about two minutes before the hour. So I had two minutes to look at this list. And in that two minutes, I, I thought this session, which I'm calling Half Day Step Away, was going to happen on the following Monday. It was a half day session with a leadership team of a municipality, and there was a unanswered question in this in that I wanted one of the members of the leadership team to present something and I didn't know if he was going to present. Keep in mind all of this is happening within the two minutes I'm waiting for Val to join. So during those two minutes I sent an email to that person saying, Scott, you can see you can see the text in the window. Yeah, I hope you had a good weekend checking in to see if you're going to be able to present with me. And then I jumped into my meeting with Val. Now, this is where, in my opinion, it gets really interesting from an agency perspective. So Scott responded, no problem at all. So I've got my answer. And then he added this information where he said, I'm really enjoying using the brain structure. I'd actually sent him a version of the mind map we're looking at. I'm going to go back to my recent books, build them in using smart notes. So he basically expressed a real strong interest in mind mapping. And Shelley, this might ring a bell for you, but it was literally the next day that you sent me an email saying, hey, would you like to do a webinar? Wow. And so, and so that's why I called the synchronicity. And here <laughs> was born a new project. And talk about agency. So I have Scott, who's now going to be my dry run for assembling this mind map. And out of the blue, here we sit doing this webinar. All of this was kind of born out of that two minute window I had while I was waiting for Val to join the call. So to me, that's what that's what agency means. It's, nice. it's, this, it's this idea of deriving a task in the moment based on how much time you have, your energy and the context you're in. You don't need an existing set of tasks and then pick which one you're going to do. I've experimented with that and it to me, trying to have a list of your what bit me doesn't work. Filing away your what bit me is not, in my opinion, a good idea. What bit me you have to deal with. But this idea of pinging Scott would not have come to me if I wasn't looking at this list. So does right. that answer that question? Michelle? Yeah, and I think it's an interesting point when you, especially when we talk about it from what bit me, which is reactive to yeah. it's in my brain now. I am proactive, like yeah. I have that agency, and that's a yeah. very empowering thing um, with the smart notes and David Allen. So that's a that's a nice new framing of kind of where we want to go with the brain. You can have the information in the brain, but you know the reason it's there is so you can act on it and you can get to where you need to be as an individual. Yeah. Um, so that's very interesting. Um, there was uh, somebody else wasn't clear on the, the the use of the word atomic. Does that mean these two these things are separate? And of course, in Zen Kettleston and on PKM Tools for Thoughts, a lot of people talk about their you know atomic notes. Can you yeah. um, let's explore that idea of your two atomic units and why are they atomic? Does that mean okay. they're separate? Does that mean they okay. blow up and come together? How does that work? 
Oh, that's a very, very good question. So what, when I'm referring to them as atomic, I guess the analogy I'm using is, is kind of like the, the smallest irreducible element that's going to go well with other pieces to make something big. So it's the smallest element. That's why I'm calling it atomic. I'm kind of putting aside quantum physics for the moment, and I'm saying the atom is the smallest element. And I think the best way for me to answer that question is to sh is to actually show you an example. So I'd gone okay. through <clears throat> the my my lists, and let's look at the fascinating topic list. So. One of the books I'm reading is this book called The Art of the Long View. It's by a fellow named Peter Schwartz. He's now the futurist at Salesforce. He was the futurist at Shell. He was the technical consultant for a movie that came out eons ago called War Games. And he makes a point in this book that really stuck with me. And this is a fairly simple example, but here's an example of an atomic unit. Experts are able to rapidly simulate in their domain of expertise is the point that not only Peter Schwartz makes in this book, but I found someone named Gary Klein in his book, Sources of Power, makes the same point. And then Sunky Ahrens himself kind of makes the point. So to me, this idea is an atomic unit. Now, okay. what can I do with this idea. So now I'm kind I'm kind of in my Zettelkasten, which stands for slipbox. I'm in my treasure trove of ideas. And so I start building on this idea. And there's a quote from I think it's Gary Klein's book around uh training training fire departments to be a fire ground commander, yet need to have a rich fantasy life. So basically what he's saying nice. is when you're in the middle of fighting a fire, you better be able to rapidly simulate. So you see that connection mm -hmm. to the idea. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then as part of my consulting, I'm thinking about how do I help the people I'm working with rapidly simulate in their domain of expertise? So now I'm reading the book with that question in my mind, and I kind of derived this template, which is from Sources of Power. And this is literally a slide I use when I say we're, we're going to run a simulation as a team. Here's my definition of a simulation. So now you see I've taken that idea of experts rapidly simulating their domain of expertise, and I've created a how-to template, still not referencing any particular project. There's no work I'm doing that's calling for this yet, but I found the idea quite fascinating, and I stored it within my Zettelkasten. All of these smart notes, there's over 1,100 smart notes. So here's my Zettelkasten. If I was to click on this, and I won't right now, only because it's a, the sheer volume of it, but there's 1,100 different smart notes sitting there. Nice. So then comes a project with the City of London. And there's a strategic planning session. It's going to happen with the City of London. And one of the things that I'd like to present is this idea that there's a big difference between planning and running a simulation. So that's a topic for me on this session. So according to peter schwartz the goal of strategic planning is to actually liberate insights early so it's hard to create a plan when you don't when there's an insight that would change the plan so simulations help you run insights if you try to create a plan before you have the insights it's going to be maladaptive so now i need to get ready for this session so i kind of i know that i want to include that template in terms of scenarios and so you can see this for the newer users, you can just type in a little something and then you will get your list of other ideas that may not necessarily be connected. So you know what you're looking for, but you'll also get that discovery factor if there well, is something. And and I think as Shelly mentioned, you know, part of it is you know what you're looking for. And then as Sunky Aaron says, some how do you stumble across an idea that you've forgotten? but would be extremely useful at the moment. So there's this serendipitous piece as well, Shelley, where sometimes you just start typing in keywords and and smart notes from your own past, forgotten, all of a sudden present. And and this is what I mean by your Zettelkast and can very ha have a very mm -hmm. interesting conversation with your work. So I know that I want to talk to this group about running simulations. And so the slide deck is sitting right here. 
I know that I want them to try to run a simulation. So the template of how you do that is right here. So in the 30 seconds that it took me to bring in these thoughts, I actually feel like I'm 70% prepared for this session I'm going to hold after 30 seconds. So now I need right. to copy all these slides, bring them into a new deck because I don't, you want to keep your atomic units of ideas clean and separate. So I, I typed in slides, then I used comma. So it pulls in the uh, parent of the, of the thought. So now, and right now they're draft because they don't exist. And so now I'll start copy and pasting from here, put them all into this one presentation, make it a little more specific for this particular meeting. And now I've got my slides, my slides ready. And one of the simulations, and again, this is a real example. One of the simulations I want to do was drawn out of yet another book, which is uh, based on appreciative inquiry and is this idea of picturing wild success. And the instructions are very clear on how you picture wild success. And so I presented this at the uh, strategic planning session for this municipality I was working with. I brought it, this slide was pre-existing because I had all of this in my Zettelkasten. And I asked the person I was working with to apply, to try to picture wild success on rejuvenating the downtown core. And I really wish uh, I was recording it because as I saw her think about it for about 15 seconds, here's, here's what she said word for word after about 15 seconds worth of thinking, which, which I think is a fantastic description of what the downtown core would look like in the ideal state. And if you read her description, you can immediately see what the critical variables are. Safety, uh, business partnerships, and some venue for entertainment. Like it just jumps off yeah. her description. So now what was a piece of work that I presented to the strategy department just became a smart note. Her output became a smart note I can use moving forward. And which is, and I created a kind of a picture while success template, which is specific around here's how you pick, here's how you create a picture of while success. So you see how doing one piece of work, I bring in smart notes for me to do the work. And then as I do the work, it creates new smart notes. Now, right. Go ahead, go ahead, Shelly. I was just going to say, and speaking of this conceptual framework to sort of take action, Norm, I have to bring in Norm's question, you know, where you, uh, how does Omar populate the brain with graphics, pictures, code, copy and paste? So for some of our newer users, we have this wonderful zoomable thought icon feature, but then you've yeah. also got some cool like PowerPoint slides. So that's more of a technical question, but I'm sure a lot of our users are chomping at the bit to get not only the the, the framework, but some of these nice visuals. I also sure. personally just love seeing all those books with the title uh, and then the, the framework below. That's also really nice. It, it really does facilitate a level of understanding and comp and uh, to really act on kind of, as opposed to just reading the book. If I get it in my brain, I have the yeah. title, you know. Sure, no, I'd be glad to explain that. And I think um, in terms of what you're looking at here, uh, credit goes to, to Matt actually, because Matt said, Omer, I think you should present more often right from your brain because typically what I would do is I would open this PowerPoint presentation I'd start presenting and okay. so so thank you Matt these didn't exist uh, until yesterday but they're very very easy to create because basically what you do is you click on the PowerPoint presentation so here's the PowerPoint presentation and I just right click and copy that slide and then I minimize the presentation and I create, I'm just making up the name here. Mm -hmm. And then when you, you see here where, you know how I'd copied from PowerPoint, I hit paste icon and it's really, it's really that easy. And there it is. So this is very powerful for my smart notes that are, have become pretty stable, pretty useful, don't change very much at all is now they're becoming part of my ongoing presentation and I will I will give you let me let me show you an example of where 
this has ended up becoming really, really handy is on Monday, there was a fellow by the name of uh, Barry Kaufman, psychologist, and he tweeted on Monday. He, he tweeted that someone, uh, an expert in the area of flow, Stephen Kotler, just published a new paper, which was very interesting, called The First Few Seconds of Flow. So that was Monday. So I downloaded the paper because it's of interest. And I'm also thinking in the back of my mind, I'm doing a presentation on Tuesday, last Tuesday, so the day after I saw this tweet with the London, Ontario, Canada Fire Department. And I'm thinking this first few seconds of flow, I think it's got to have some pertinence to the fire department. So I started reading the paper and it I, I got very, very interested very, very fast. And I'll kind of show you why. So here I am reading a paper, creating smart notes as I'm reading it. And the reason I found this so interesting is that Stephen Kotler outlines 14 triggers of flow. So there's 14 different ways you can enter flow. So now let's go to the fire department presentation. And I, I'm not making this example up. So the fire chief before I started my presentation said, you know, the first five minutes drives the next five hours when it comes to firefighting. And I said, that is really interesting to me because, you know, there's this thing called flow triggers that can be instantly activated. And I think it's crucial in your field to instantly activate flow. So let me, when I set my computer up, I will actually show you what I mean. And I just jumped to this this idea that literally didn't exist until the day before and so that's how um generative i'm trying to get with my smart notes is i try to use them as as kind of fast as i fast as i can and i showed not only the flow triggers but i also showed there's uh i'm just going to quickly open the presentation here and just to show you that Kotler lays out this example of where a, a speeding motorcycle is cut off by a car and same situation can have two very different outcomes mm -hmm. based on your ability to get into flow. So this directly talks to the first few, the first five minutes make a big difference, which was really important to the London, London Fire Department. So do you see how I kind of swing back and forth between, I mean, I let my area of interest drive what smart notes I put together, but I've also got a view of what type of work am I doing and it biases what I'm currently fascinated with. And so yeah, the two, all... go ahead, Shelly. That sounds, cause it's almost like directed imagination. Like you want that space to think and be inspired, but as opposed to just, you know, reading a book and thinking about it in your head, you want to get it in a place where you can take that inspiration and, and act on it, like if yeah. you're a fire chief or a performance coach or in management. Um, so that's, I think, what I'm finding interesting. Um, you know, we these big ideas are coming out, they're being broken apart, and they're being put in a way that, you know, we can actually implement them in our lives. Well, and as you were talking, so first of all, thank you for naming a fascinating topic, directed imagination, love that. And now we'll just start bringing in the pieces I can think of that kind of talk to directed imagination and at some point and I'll give you the appropriate credit at some point I'll be doing a presentation I'm going to use that term and maybe I'm we'll gonna... do a webinar on it next <laughs> next <laughs> year here we go we, we've got it so I'll I hope that answered calendar. I'd love to and I hope that answered Norm's question in terms of how you create the graphics and I hope you also see why color coding is so important to me. It is, and you know what we can do? We'll, we'll kind of continue on, but uh, to Norm and a couple other people were asking about zoomable icons. If we have time at the end, we can get more into that tutorial or also know that um, we have the 101 tomorrow. Um, we're going very big um, for everyone's imagination and performance because we're not necessarily getting into every detail of how to create. We will do a little bit more of that at the end, but 
Uh, if you want to learn, I, I can imagine Matt will have about 10 different questions on Zoomable icons in his 101 tomorrow at 10 a.m. Pacific, so you can sign up for that. There are a few more uh, comments I'll, I'll read quickly, and then we'll get you uh, back on to, to the other stuff. One was coming from Cyprin. It's not a question. Uh, he said, but, or she, but this is completely blowing my mind. Thank you so much. Love the reference as well. Just put a whole bunch of books on hold. Great work, Omar. I'm coming to terms with having ADHD close to the end of my career, and this is so timely. Mm. Um, so I think um, this individual's question speaks to focus, you mm. know, and how how getting it in that place can give you that focus uh, when there are there is so much hitting us, especially, you know, that's why I wanted to do the session year end because yeah. here we are with year end deadlines, family commitments, um, you know, the economy is getting a bit tougher. Like how do we yeah. kind of bring it together? Yeah. Um, so, so thank you for that, for that comment and to kind of whet your appetite even more because you complimented books, you see how I can go right to, kind of my go-to reading list number one. And then if your area of interest is a little more along the lines of mine, here's a deeper cut on some of the things I'm interested in. So I, you know, I'm always, this, this is what it means to continually accumulate smart notes in your Zettelkast. And to your comment about ADHD, I resonate with that. The way, the way that presents for me is I think about a topic, I get very excited. It's the shiny object. And then all of a sudden I'm thinking about something else and then I'm thinking about something yeah. else. But, but did you see how my jumping from shiny object to shiny object actually helped me get ready for a meeting in literally 60 seconds? Because I can jump to my areas of interest, but then I can also just quickly bring them into a focus area. If I'm presenting to a leadership team in the not too distant future, I can the, the mind map actually helps me focus. And so I find it's 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 kind of I don't know if this is the right term or not, but for me it's almost like a healthy form of shiny object to shiny object ADHD because it it's all captured anyway. The other the other comment I want to make is I've been because I've been using this for 14 years, I've gone through more thought types than I than I care to imagine. And I've and I've kind of settled on what you're looking at right here. Like these are these are all oh, the thoughts. Yeah, and that's great. Somebody had asked about let's I'd love to see all his thought types, most used thought types, thought yeah. types and tags. So you'll notice uh so here they are. And you you saw me start to create them in that blank brain. Uh, you'll notice there's two sets of hierarchies. There's thought types under Zettelkasten and thought types under work. So there's the yin and the yang of my life, the treasure trove of ideas and my my work. So there they are. Now, don't. what I've learned is there's no need to get this right on the first go. The mind map is has quite a bit of flexibility when it comes to thought types, and I'll show you an example. So I have a thought type called 2021 Projects. This is not a, by definition, this is not a thought type I use anymore. So it's now taking up space in my, in my array of thought types. I can easily take care of that by converting the thought type into a normal thought. And then all of the thoughts that had that type now report to this thought. So nothing's lost. It's kind of been archived but now I don't have 2021 project taking up my array of thought types. So you can add and take away and experiment, land on your own set of thought types, but don't feel like you have to get it right the first time. And on that note, and then I'll come back to you, Shelley. Um, yeah. the, the other thing that I find uh, uh, fairly, fairly useful as well is if I start to, Put in so I so there's a person named Rosanna, and Rosanna is a people thought type. I have an icon which happens to be my avatar, but I put it under Rosanna. Now let's say so you see the projects Rosanna's involved with. Well, I can take this thought type, and I can actually convert it to a tag, and now you'll see that those projects that thought type just got turned into a tag and you'll notice the 
the image or the icon came with the tag. So now I can, when I click on strategic planning, I know I'm working with Roseanne on it. So there's, there's so many different ways to capture conceptually how you like to associate your information. And you're never trapped. Once you pick away, you're never trapped if you change your mind is probably what I appreciate the most about it. Right, and for some of the newer users on the call, just to kind of step back, you've got your thoughts, which is your visual mind map, and then the thought type, you have one thought type per, uh, per thought, that's where you can give the color and the icon, and then tags, you can see Rosanna W is a tag, you can have multiple tags. Um, you know, for those little snippets or fields of knowledge that you want to add just to, um, you know, in case anyone's wondering, like, what is the difference between uh, thought, thought type, thought tag, um, just different levels of, of categorization for your own. Use. And there's a visual cue there as well that we should point out. Um, you can see Rosanna W right now. It has those chamfered edges that is visually identifying that thought as being a tag, whereas a thought type has rounded corners and um, a regular thought when you hover over it just nice square corners so there's that visual cue to help you keep track of what's a thought type a thought tag and a, and a native thought within the brain as well now omar we of course have a ton more questions would we like to sure. continue down your path of your presentation no, or would I, you like to entertain no. more questions <laughs> we I can mean, I, choose your own adventure choose your own thought type here I we're could, uh, we I could go either go, way i could go on for days i'd rather okay. I'd rather ask questions that you know are on people's minds, so I'm glad to answer questions. Okay. Well, I've, got a, I've got a few for you, um, Omer, and one came in from James, and I think uh, Stephen had this question as well, talking about keeping track of, you know, prioritizing your tasks and, and mapping out your week. Now, I've yeah. had the privilege of meeting with Omer and, and seeing even more features in his amazing brain. But one of the things that you shared with me that I haven't seen you uh, share yet is how you map out like, all right, here's what's going on this week. Mm -hmm. And just a quick overview of all the things that you're keeping track of and how many, um, you know, how many, uh, you know, gold nuggets happened to, on Monday and did enough yeah. happen to keep me satisfied through the rest of the week. If you could just yeah. walk us through that process. Sure. Uh, that, so, yeah, no, yeah, no, I'd, I'd love to. So basically, on any given day when I come sit at my desk, uh, the first place I, I open my calendar because I need to know what's happening that day and I click on this. This this is a thought type of output. It's called this week. And what I have sitting in here are the five work day, the five working days of my week. And here we are today. So I click on today and <clears throat> you notice I put the comma first. And so now one of the things that's happening today, and I could have put this anytime up until up and up to right now, I could have put it in at the beginning of the week, but it kind of tells me everything that I'm doing today in terms of meetings. Now, this is different than if you're wondering, well, why aren't you just using your calendar for that? This is, I'm not using this to schedule stuff. I'm using this because I'm creating a container where I can now bring my best thinking. So, and for example, if I'm meeting Val, so the first thing I do is I connect this meeting to the overall project, which I call Val. And then secondly, I know one of the things that Val wants to talk about is that I brought up simulations. He said, that's interesting to me. So now I'll make sure I talk about that. Um, I know that flow triggers are gonna be interesting to Val. So I'm gonna bring that in. And there's also, uh, a template that I have based on a book by Michael Watkins called The First Nine Days. And, well, actually, here it is right here. Now, take a look at this. This is the perfect example of stuff I'd forgotten. So I've actually written a LinkedIn post on The First 90 Days, which I'd totally forgotten about. And the mind map is reminding me that I had. And I also have a template based on that book. So I know this template's gonna have, help Val. So I am now ready for my meeting with Val and I'll ask him where he wants to start and I just jump to these thoughts. So that's that's the way I do my work. Now in terms of productivity over time, I check, so here's Monday. And when I look, when I click on a day during the week, if I don't see smart notes under that day, that tells me 
that I was either focused, that was a bad day for what bit me, or I was focused on, I had quite a bit of work that day, so I didn't have a lot of time to spend in my Zettelkasten. And so that's a note to myself to make sure like tomorrow, for example, I don't have as many meetings, so I'm gonna deliberately focus on capturing more smart notes tomorrow. And I'll probably play around, you know, I'll, well, I'll tell you right now what I'll do. Um, that term that Shelley coined is really interesting to me. So I'm gonna spend some time thinking about whatever that means. And I can bring in either reading material or something that's gonna stimulate my thinking to generate smart notes. So this is where I do my work. And this is not as the, the the manual updating of this is not as onerous as it might have seem as it might seem. I just click on this gate, I can unlink all of these. I can go to 2022.11. And then if I know next week, I don't remember uh bear with me here uh for demonstration purposes. So I don't know if the 19th is the Monday or not, but I just grab the next five days. And I just link them. So in my opinion, that was not very onerous to update your this week on a rolling one week period. The other thing I've done is I do create these manually. You'll notice December doesn't have any days. Now you could imagine me sitting here typing in one, two, three. But again, I have a list here, which is basically pre-populated with commas and colons. And you'll see what that means when I just copy and paste that into here, make the thought type output. And there you have it. So it's not that manual. And it allows me, when you're not sure where to put a piece of work, this is the challenge with filing stuff. When you're not sure where to put something, just put it under today, because the key is what do you want to link it to? It's not where do you want to put it, it's what do you want to link it to? And as Sunky Aaron says, link it to every context you can think of that you would want to stumble across that idea again. That's the fundamental advice in how to take smart notes. Did that answer your question, Matt? Yeah, that was great. That was great. And it generated just a, a lot of wows and thank yous. So that's just fantastic. Absolutely. It did. Okay. And it kind of related to a, a question that has popped up both by Stephen and RD. Um, they're wondering if you use the one brain to rule them all or if you have separate brains or how many yeah. brains. It looks like you sort of are in the sort of one brain category. You certainly have one very <laughs> extensive brain, but yeah. we're, we're curious to know, you know, what camp you fall into. Yeah, so I am 100% card carrying one brain to rule them all camp. And the oh. reason, and the reason <laughs> I am is because uh, <laughs> I can't do all, it's the stumbling aspect. So unless yeah. everything is yeah. sitting under these two halves, I'm not going to stumble across it when I when I need to. So my my working brain is sitting right here. Uh, Matt and I uh, looked at it quickly yesterday. It's got 60,000 thoughts in it. Uh, it's been building since 2008. I am uh, very much a one brain rules them all kind of guy. Mm -hmm. uh, unless I need a coaching brain for demo purposes that I'm going to share like we're looking at today. Right, right. And okay. even this brain did not did not take me very long at all to build because I can copy any thought I want from my working brain to put here. So I'm a one brain rules it all kind of person. All right, we might be outnumbering Matt today on the call. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on? Okay, well, we have another question um, from Wahid. Can Omar explain the use of the at symbol, the yeah, uh, sure. dollar sign, et cetera? What do they do? Sure. So when I was creating uh, this one, you'll notice when I kind of gave it a name and I typed in Zettelkasten and projects, Zettelkasten naturally landed on the right because the thoughts are organized alphabetically. And so that's why I added the at symbol, because I, I don't know why, but I'd like my treasure trove of ideas to be on the left and my work to be on the right. So I use symbols like the at symbol so it will organize how thoughts present. 
when you look at a day, like when I when I looked at, I guess I need to go back to, I think it was, I think Monday was the 17th, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, no, what? Oh, today's 17th. Bear with me here. Remind me what day Monday was. The 14th. 13th. Okay. I'm looking at Matt. I'm like. <laughs> Uh, I think you had notes on the 17th and 18th was where uh, Here, you had uh, the child's I'm too engrossed so in this brain. Yeah, I uh, let me show it via project. So when I click on, let's look. Monday let's was look the 14th. This. 14th. Okay. Well, I I've kind of switched Shelly, so I'll just okay. show it. I'll show yeah. it here. Sounds good. So here here's the thought type for this webinar, and I want my smart notes to be top left. And so that's where the dollar sign has two meanings to me. One is it helps again organize where the thoughts land, and dollar sign is just a reminder for me that my smart notes are those treasure trove of ideas. So some of this is just symbology that has meaning to me, and some of it is uh, adding particular symbols so the thoughts get organized in a certain order. Now these thoughts here that you see that don't have a, a type attached to them. These are literally captured from my conversation with Scott yesterday. Remember Scott, the guy who said loving the brain? And I said, perfect. Nice. I'm doing, a, I'm doing a webinar. So he said to me, okay, they'll probably know GTD better than Smart Notes. So make sure you mm -hmm. act accordingly. Um, this came this came from a discussion I had with Matt. Make sure that you can show examples that can be converted. Scott said, make sure you kind of, what is in it for you? Why are you doing this? And the reason I'm doing this is I strongly believe uh, the power of communicating between your treasure trove of ideas and your work will fundamentally enhance your five lists that run your life. That's why I'm doing this. So you see how you can capture information in real time. And just like I captured the imagination uh, term you coined is that it allows me to capture in real time and the symbols back to the question are solely so that the thoughts are presented in a certain order for me. All right, great. And then in terms of capture, Michael had a question. Maybe this is also, uh, uh, Matt, uh, something for, well, for both of you. How do you continue to capture thoughts when you're not at your computer? We do have something called the mobile brain. So that's yeah. what I use. I like the brain box, but I'm sure yeah. everyone's interested in like what Omar, how how you're doing it. Sure. Um, or... So so Matt, are you okay if I kind of describe yeah, how I... Right yeah. Okay, because I'm sensitive to time too, because I know you've got some information on checklists that I think would be really helpful as well. So the way I use mobile, mobile for me is very, very powerful. I, I think every once in a while, Shelly, and and Matt got an email from me saying, hey, just letting you know how much I'm loving using this because basically what I do is, so imagine I walk away from my computer and now I'm sitting on my couch and I can pull up this same presentation that you're looking at on my phone. Now what I focus on is, again, let's look at that presentation I had coming up. So literally, as I'm watching TV, I start planning out what are all the things that I want to uh, talk about in this in this presentation. And what you're seeing me do right now is very easy to do from your phone. You just because the the in, the thoughts are are kind of pre-existing, sitting in your brain. And so all I do is I start typing in the search window on my phone and I go, oh, that's right. I want to do the Rosanna mock simulation on that day. So I just start bringing in the pieces I know I'm going to need to use. So during commercials of a show, I've gotten myself 70% ready for a meeting that 80 seconds before that I had nothing underneath it and I did it all for my phone. Great. Okay, well, um, we're getting, Matt, did, I don't know if we want to, do you want to quickly show a little bit on the checklists? 
So well, I certainly can. And it, so it's, um, you know, that uh, feature in the brain lends itself very well to sort of the overall topic of GTD okay. that we're covering today. So um, really quickly, another feature in the brain, two minutes, you got it. So I'm no going pressure. No to pressure, take guys. presenter <laughs> and I've got a little app here that uh, allows me to just need to turn on my phone. But yeah, part of um, like getting things done, like for me, I personally, I'm always in my brain on mobile. Like I'm chasing after my daughter, I'm on the go. So um, what's amazing about the brain, just in terms of architecture, um, you can have your local version. You can use it like when you're on a flight or if you're in the field with no internet connection, you've got your mobile version and then you can do it on the cloud and they can all synchronize to all your devices to other people's um, brains as well. So there's a lot of different modalities in terms of that knowledge and that knowledge capture happening kind of where you need it to. And here you can see on the desktop version, I've got a thought in my brain. I simply call it my weekend checklist. So this is sort of my recreational brain. Omer was sharing his, you know, his business Monday through Friday brain. This is the brain that I go to on the weekends. What am I working on this weekend? What's happening with the family and so forth? And I keep checklists and checklists help me stay organized with all my projects, whether it's work related or recreational. I simply make a checklist of everything I'm going to be working on. And typically it starts out in the brain, sometimes uh, the brain on the desktop. Sometimes it happens through the brain on my iPhone. So I have an app here that is actually displaying my brain uh, on my iPhone and I can go to my pins and my weekend checklist thought and tap on the note, and there is the exact same list as you see on the desktop uh, accessible from my iPhone. We also have an Android app available, and uh, it works the same way. As you can see, I can simply check those items off the list. I can even rename different items and modify it while I'm working on my checklist. And once I make those changes here on my iPhone, I'll just tap on the little sync icon. So the sync updates, and I, my brain will sync automatically in the background here and checks off that, uh, that particular item. What's a step beyond that is that if you think about this, I've got checklists peppered throughout my brain. All these different thoughts of, this is a very large brain, five to maybe 10,000 thoughts in this brain. There's checklists all over the place. The brain allows me to review all thoughts and here i just clicked on this little icon in the upper right hand corner this is a pro feature of the brain it allows me to review all thoughts that exist within this brain with unfinished items and i can review everything that needs to happen uh, regardless of the topic and if i want to review um you know with my thanksgiving checklist i can actually click and go right to directly to that thought continue working on the checklist either in the notes or in the checklist, the to-do list over on the right. And the same goes- Thanksgiving? Are yeah, you celebrating Thanksgiving? Up. Okay. It's coming up. You can see I've got my- You got two Canadians who've had it in <laughs> October, but I'm, I'm, I'm Jewel, so I'm gonna do both. I'm gonna have turkey again. There we go, we'll double oh, there up, it is. absolutely. Nice. And here you can see on my iPhone, I am back on my iPhone and I'm gonna tap on my to-do list so I can easily get to the entire, every unfinished item within my brain. It's an incredibly powerful tool. Ultimately, I'd like to have all of these items checked off, uh, but there's checklists on projects that are just ongoing for you know year after year that I have in this brain. But as you can see, there are 267, you can see that at the very top, 267, 267 unchecked, checklist items in this particular brain. That Including so, 12 Granny Smith apples. That's right. And when that happens and I click that off, I'll just check. Oh, I'm see, I'm trying to click there. I'll do it here on my phone. You're on the simulator. Yeah, I'm on the simulator. I check that off. We go down to 266. So it updates right away. And once again, syncs in the background and syncs here on the desktop. And actually, this is a great example too, because I, Omar likes to do a lot of his notes visually in the Plex with thoughts, which is cool to make the connections. But a lot of these note-taking apps, as we know, that's a whole other category. So if you prefer to just have a big 
brain dump in your notes section, um, you can kind of see the differences uh, in terms of Matt's brain versus Omar's brain. And I'm, I'm glad we can show everyone who's on the call today like that kind of variety. So if you kind of feel like, I don't want to create a thought for every you know day of the week, that's okay. You can have one thought for the month. And if it's all in notes, um, you know, there are many ways to do it, but the the core idea of getting that information in that trusted place where you can act on it and empower yourself will remain true for whatever sort of mapping note versus thought uh, uh, tactic you want to take to build it kind of thing. That's very true. It's it's very flexible. I can see how, Omer, in your scenario, you, you need to know when you had that meeting with Val, when yeah. a project was completed or assigned or what have you. For me, I don't need to remember when the washer and dryer was fixed. I just yeah. need to make sure it gets fixed. So I've got one yeah. thought, weekend checklist, doesn't matter when it gets done, yeah. as long as it eventually gets done. So two uh you know two different ways to use the same tool to you know accomplish tasks nice and we do have a lot of talks we're on uh, android app is coming quite nicely um mm -hmm. you know follow us on twitter for that we've got the iphone ipad um yeah and did we cover real quick i don't want to get into it but brain box because i love just putting my thing you know if you don't want to think at all <laughs> or you don't have time you always have your brain box to kind of just you know, it goes in there. So real quick, right. Matt, let's just- Yeah, just I can send files. Brain to, box. Uh, if I had a particular file that I had, uh, here's an MP4 or file. Or it's great for right web there. snippets. I love it for uh, like I'm reading CNN or any kind of online. I, and this is where that whole putting away becomes so powerful. Um, the David Allen likes to talk it, do it, defer it. Um, I, I will see a great article, but I might be in the middle of getting ready for a presentation. So I don't necessarily have time to read it, but I don't want to lose it. So that's where you want to capture that. So you can come back to it when you actually have the time at the end of the day or on the weekend um, right. to look at that. Um, so, so you, know, you, you can drag it and drop it in your brain. Or if you don't even have time for that, you can, you can use the brain box. That's right. That's right. So any web page that you visit, and you can do this from your Android device, iPhone, or from any browser, um, you can install the um, uh, the BrainBox add-on, or sometimes it's called the um, uh, extension for Chrome. So here I am in Chrome. I've got my BrainBox extension. I don't have time to get to this particular brain, rather, you know, not even navigate to the correct thought. I just want to get this information all about today's webinar as a thought in my brain. So I'm going to just click on that button. It's going to ask me to add on, it needs to know what account to send this to. So I will log in really quickly. Uh, so I log in and there we go. It was added into my brain box. Now, when I have the time to spare, I can return to my brain and I'll just open up my brain box. Now you're going to see the types of things that I add into my brain box. Nice. Uh, you can see right there at the top is that registration. I can find the correct brain. I can find the correct thought where I want to archive this information or save this information and add this particular thought. Uh, so I've got recipes for chocolate cake, as you can see. I've got pictures of my kids that I'm adding to thoughts in my brain. I use the brain for everything, whether it's files, documents, web pages, and so forth. So anytime, you can see I need to do a little bit of cleaning. These are pages that I'm interested in, but I haven't had time to actually organize them or find where they're going to exist within my brain yet. Okay, so great. That content at any time. Yeah, so very, just just lots of different ways to, to to get the information and take control. Let's flip back to you, Omar. We are now on the hour. Uh, mm -hmm. A lot of people are asking, is this recorded? Yes, uh, you will have a recording. We are going to go into overtime um, for Q&A for, I think, uh, about uh, 15 minutes. Do we have another 15 minutes for Q&A, Omar? Sure. How are you doing for time? Oh, absolutely. Okay. Okay, great. And uh, before we um, jump more into the question panel, Omar, was there anything in, you know, kind of looking at questions or hearing what Matt and I, anything that you want to uh, kind of cover? Um, and actually, Jan has asked, um, I hope you give Omar time to teach me his GTD and Zettelkasten. <laughs> so, well, that could be a whole other, but I mean, I guess let's go back to Jan's question. 
uh, I guess a little bit more on your your GTD and Zellkasten, uh, this individual's interested in learning, and then I have a few more questions. And anything else you want to make sure you get into today's session? We're unpacking a lot. I can see a future session probably in uh, next year, but uh, I'll, I'll give you the floor and we'll start throwing a few more questions uh, back at you for the last uh, 15 minutes of, of this webinar. Okay. So uh, would you like me to just high level talk about GTD and Zettelkasten? Was that the question? Yeah, uh, Jan, let us know. I guess just a little, uh, oh yeah, and Owen and wants Owen more saying, on Zettelkasten too. So there, okay. there's some requests just for Zettelkasten. If you guys have something much more specific, we're just going live in the in the chat stream. Sure. Go ahead and chat it in. Um, <clears throat> that's what we're, we're hearing right now. Okay. So if you look at the very top of my brain, I guess uh, the one thing I want to highlight is the right half is all the work I do. And that that's what I want you to associate the getting things done methodology with. The left half is called Zettelkasten, which tra it's a German word and it translates to slip box. And what I want you to imagine is I've got potentially an infinite number of cue cards where it, each cue card is a smart note. And I don't have to worry about how I file them or how I organize them because I can link anything to anything. And so we're now looking at the Zettelkasten, which is the how to take smart notes methodology. And remember one of the lists that I mentioned is one of the questions that you're pondering that transcend any work. If I click on, like here is literally the questions I'm pondering. This is a, a grab from my real brain so these aren't artificial i've got 20 26 kind of questions uh, sorry not 26 but I'll, I'll tell you i don't know even know where i got the number 26 from i've got 61 questions that are driving me right now and these questions all they they're just a reflection of my intellectual curiosity and this is the beginning of the Zettelkasten methodology is that you start with the questions that you're currently interested in pursuing. And then as you pursue them, <clears throat> you know, here's a question. How can I tap into my flow activator? So I already know that paper I discovered this week is going to help contribute, is going to help contribute to this. So I'm taking, I'm creating connections between my questions and then how I'm going to go about answering them. And that's really what the Zettelkasten is for. It's this place for you to have interesting dialogue between yourself and your previous ideas. And through that interesting dialogue, you can jump to the getting things done methodology and bring in ideas from your Zettelkasten that'll help you get your work done. So there's a very nice separate but powerful exchange that happens between these two domains. I think that's the best way I can explain what I mean by getting things done and, and settle cast. Right. And I notice, you know, a lot of people are asking questions about if they'll get a copy, Omer, of, of your brain. And I think we're looking at the version that you have sterilized, taken out all any personal information. Um, to uh, for others to use a, a brain of yours that that we'll be able to share. But this is not your real brain, as you mentioned earlier. Your real brain has over sixty thousand thoughts. This yeah. is even though you're seeing so many thoughts on the screen right now. This is a snippet of Omer's actual day-to-day -day brain that uh, that he's using. Yeah, but, right. Uh, yeah, we will have a sample brain, correct, Omer, that you're you're willing to share. We will. I, and we it, have our sample brain too. So you'll have yeah. a couple different templates to, to help you get started. We'll get those available. You can probably even join Matt on 101 tomorrow. To, he'll show you how to work on those or, you know. Um, I also just want to clarify, somebody wrote, I, I'm having trouble getting my head around one program. When we were talking about one brain that rules it all, we just meant the brain has the ability for you to create one brain in the application or multiple brains per topic, but the brain interacts with many different programs. Um, like you can export your brain to XML, you can make links into your SharePoint application. So 
Um, one brain doesn't mean you're not connected to another a number of different programs and information sources. We haven't, that's not necessarily what we're covering, but in terms of integrating files and linking to third party websites and linking to unique URLs within different tools, like even salesforce.com and things like that, you actually can do that. So I just want to clarify when we talk about the one brain that rules it all, we kind of just mean instead of the, the traditional mind mapping view is to create separate little brains on like one way one project another project what i'm doing this month next month because they have a scalability issue um they're they're flat paper based whereas the brain you can literally have n there's no limit to the number of thoughts and ideas that can be connected so because of that you can create this all-powerful one single brain um, for all your stuff. But that being said, you know, you don't have to. Uh, Matt has uh, very large brains, but very separate brains for different things that he wants to do. And that's fine as well. So I just wanted to make sure we covered that. And then Marzano was asking, speaking of uh, mind mapping, does the brain have an outline mode or uh, can I see more of the thoughts? So that's the, in the option um, so to view, uh, Omar, I don't know if you want to switch views or, you know, we can cover that in the 101. You can change the thoughts. You can also change uh, the display to go into outline or distant thoughts as well. Um, so what we're looking at is a standard view, but if you want to see the the other views, that's that's something that we can show you on a 101 or, uh, yeah, and there, it's, it's under view there. So, yeah, so that's more of your traditional mind map view. Um, I think we kind of skirt where we're not entirely a mind map because we're database, but and we also fall into the, the the notes for thought, the notes tool as well. So there's this interesting combination where you can do a lot um, with the software. And there's our mind map view as well um, that you can see also. And Omar, I think folks are curious, do you typically stay in normal view or do you play around with the different viewing options? I tend to, I have played around with them all, but I, I tend to work in the view you're looking at now. All right, and okay, we have uh, just a couple more minutes here. So one uh, interesting question, kind of, this is a nice question to get back to the beginning of the webinar. O Owen is asking, can you explain what you mean by smart notes? Sure. So the, the title of the book is How to Take Smart Notes, and so I kind of, that's why I'm calling it a smart note. The if you go to Sunky Aaron's book, his reference is what he call he calls it a permanent note. I've just changed it to smart note. And a permanent note is if you imagine that this is your filing cabinet, your slip box, every slip is a permanent note that was written by you with one thought ready for public reading. So I've kind of I will click on this now, even though it's a, you know, the, there's a hundred, there's about 1,100 notes in here. Each one of mm -hmm. these is what I mean by smart note. In some cases, it's a YouTube video, but the the only rule I follow for this section is these were all created by me. So it's my best attempt at understanding the gist of an idea in my own words. That's that's what a permanent note is and that's what i call a smart note nice and can you re uh, review the five lists that run your life sure so there's the famous what bit me and this came from okay. rosanna actually the rosanna that you saw earlier her kids watch a show called <laughs> what bit me and it's just basically the stuff that's gonna get you that you didn't see coming but you have no choice to deal with so life would be wonderful if this list was empty this list is never empty so that's your what bit me list then comes the core dump this is getting out of your mind onto paper the things rolling around in your mind and i think david allen said it perfectly when he said your brain is for having ideas not holding them so do this every day i do this on paper i don't put my core dump lists into my mind map now, a core dump list will give me an idea for a project, which is the next list. And again, getting things done. Or I also really highly recommend uh, the book by Jeff Sutherland on Scrum. Scrum is designed for agile software development, but there are techniques you can apply as an individual. So that's your project list. Here's, here's my project list. 
And then comes your questions you're pondering. And here, here are literally all the questions I'm pondering. And then comes your fascinating topics. And the smart notes, so if I go here, those 1,100 smart notes currently break up into quite a few topics. There's no restriction on how many topics you have. Whenever I feel smart notes kind of clumping around a conceptual idea, I create a new topic. And so you're you're looking at my five lists. Does that answer the question? Yeah, it does. And I actually love that you have questions because whenever there's something stressful too going on in my life, I love yeah. just I don't necessarily know the answer. That's the thing. We yep. don't we want to yep. move away from the mind map being tools or the brain is just it's not just the static knowledge repository. Yep. It's kind of like where you work things out. You want to put yep. things in there that you're not necessarily settled with, that you're going to be yep. a little bit uncomfortable about or if you have a health issue that you're struggling about, like get it in there yep. and that's when you can really start to act and the questions is interesting to actually have the thought like as a question. I remember when COVID first came out in 2020, we did our COVID brain and we had a brain that just had like a lot of questions. Now it's all filled, but um, that's a very interesting uh, aspect of your brain that I've I've learned from and I'll have to get back to my brain and start putting some more like questions in there. Um, couple more questions on the Q&A and then we're gonna wrap things up. Um, sure. No shortage of topics, of course. Um, James is asking, can you filter as with GTD tasks by say context at home, at computer? You know how GTD does that. Yeah. Um, that's that's more of a function of usually with those types of situational tasks. We have a traditional GTD, James, and we do that with tags. Um, I'll let Omar answer that question to see, you know, kind of what more nitty gritty GTD stuff you're doing. Or maybe it's well, just high level horizons of focus type things. You know, either way, it's all good. Well, so where I've where I've kind of learned the hard way is sometimes the more I try to remember that example I gave where I had two minutes and I thought I'd send Scott an email. And that is not that is never something that I could have pre planned. I happened right. to be in the right context. I had the right amount of time to do this one little thing. So personally, I've drifted away from context because only because I found myself updating it more than it was actually helping me. So I don't, I used to use contacts that way. I don't anymore. I try to embed any context into my thought type. And so for example, uh, you know, if I click on to a project, to me, this is the fact that this is a draft as opposed to an output is context. For me, that's context because I know I need to flip the, you know, I, I will be very happy when I can do, when I can do this because now I know it's ready. So right. to me, that's what flipping context is. Mm -hmm. I actually use thought types as a way to dynamically track states or context. So I drifted away from the, from the at, uh, I used to just, uh, there was, I had home, email, computer, et cetera. I've drifted away from that, which doesn't mean it's a bad idea. It just doesn't work as well for me. Right, right. Okay, great. Well, I think with that, we are well over the hour, but uh, again, just amazing. Oh, I have to, okay, I'm going to make my reveal, my favorite thought type. I ha We have to go there. We're going to end on a, I hope you have it in this brain, strong <laughs> moment. And I love, love this thought type. I use it all the time because I just never thought of like looking at my life this way. You yeah. have these peak moments. And then I learned yeah. from Omar on, I don't know, one webinar we did a couple of years ago, like what can yes. be a strong moment? So I guess this is my question. I'm being a bit well, egocentric now. I'm ending on like my well, favorite thought type, but I think the other users will, uh, our, our attendees will, will enjoy this. It's a nice time to get that in with the holidays coming up and all that kind of stuff. So, so this is so embarrassing. So you don't have it not in the coaching brain i have okay that's so fine th there's a there's Next a thought year. type <laughs> well what shelly's talking about is uh it, with regards to flow it's important to track those times of the day when you're in that state of flow your and peak. i call when you're performing at your peak and i called it a strong moment and it was a thought type that i still use in my original yes. brain and shelly always references that 
that thought type whenever she reaches out to me. If I was to go to my my real brain, you would see I've got. Yeah, that's okay. You don't have to go there. We don't need you to reveal your real brain. It's it's a great <laughs> thought type. I'm just throwing it out there because you can get creative with these thought yeah. types. They don't just have to be like project person. It can be like strong moment, like yeah. thing. Well, you know, I, we can get into some really cool psychology um, and still get things done. And yeah. uh, you know, so that's where I took a lot of inspiration. And I, I'm I, there's some new favorites I'm seeing on this session. Um, okay, well, I just want to throw that out there. Uh, what are some of your favorite thought types in this this brain? Uh, questions is a strong favorite yeah, for, for yes. exactly the reason that you said. I can. Mm -hmm. That one's and coming out of me. I feel very strongly about the questions thought type now. I like that a lot. Yeah, the smart note, the two atomic units, the task, mm -hmm. which I happen, you notice I happen to call it, this is the task here. I call it to a jolt. Ooh, jolt. Q4. See, I like so, that too. Maybe yeah, I'm gonna move, so, jolt might be my new favorite for 2023 now. Okay. So this is this is the reminder that it's not that boring thing you have to do, but it's the thing that by doing it will put you into flow. Mm -hmm. And then this is another example of a thought type that I will archive after Q4 is over with, and I will archive it the way I showed before, and I'll create okay. a new thought type called to a jolt 2023 Q1. So that's you know, I click on that and it's another way, just like Matt showed you checklist, here's another way to see all the thing, all the tasks you have across all of your projects. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nice, so that's a, I like that, that's a, Joel. That's a favorite. It's a favorite because mm -hmm. it's an atomic unit, right? My two atomic yeah. unit favorites are Jolt and the actual smart note. Everything else, you can build everything else if you just start with those two. Excellent. Okay. Well, that uh, we're ending this with a jolt. Um, and Matt, are there any other key questions that we? There are a lot of questions, and we will support. We'll get to all of those individually. Right. We have the one hundred and one, but unfortunately, we've only got so much time. Oh, Stephen's saying lightning moment. That's kind of cool. Coming in on chat, lightning moment, jolt. Um, yep. Any final uh, words of wisdom, Omar? Anything left that you'd like to cover? or Matt, anything else that you'd like to add before we close out our session today? It was a really great fun session. I always love diving into Omar's brain. It's always great to see somebody else's brain, of course. Well, and you're welcome to email me. There's my, my okay. email. So if you wanna do a deeper dive, uh, mm -hmm. please email me. Nothing else. I I do apologize, Shelly. I wish I had a brought in strong moments. No, uh, I actually like that we didn't focus on that. We got to jolt. So so that's one of those serendipitous <laughs> things that like, you know, it's all good. There's so much to, to go through. Um, and, you know, we can say, you know, again, uh, well, I can see this coming back. We'll, we'll, we'll try and have, we will have Omar, uh, probably not this year, but maybe we can do a January webinar again uh, for all of you. I'd, uh, I'd love to. Okay, Wonderful. And a lot of folks are just saying, you know, will there be a recording? I want to assure everyone, yes, we'll have a recording of a copy of Omer's Brain, uh, a copy of our own GTD Brain that might give, provide some inspiration for you. And uh, we're always available to answer additional questions, support at thebrain.com. If we didn't get to your question today, uh, our support team will go through all of these questions and we'll respond back to you. So you will hear back from us. Uh, you saw Omer's uh, email address there. And of course, we're at support at thebrain.com. And every Friday, if this is all new to you, uh, once a week, we always have a Brain 101. I'll be hosting tomorrow's Brain 101 at uh, 10 a.m. Pacific time tomorrow. Please feel free to join us if you're new to the brain and you want to learn just the basic features to get started so that you can get to the point where Omer is with these uh, uh, wonderful thought types and tags and, and amazing, useful structure moving you through your life. Uh, it all starts with the Brain 101. So we've got that, that class tomorrow. So thank you for me for joining us today. And thank you, Omar. We, we yeah, really, special really thanks like to Omar. We, we all, I always love, uh, love doing these sessions with you. We really appreciate it. And uh, we will stay in touch. You can follow Omar on Twitter, Twitter for more tips. We'll, we'll put that in your follow-up email as well. And we'll have some templates. Uh, Matt will present the templates tomorrow on 101. And we will keep the dialogue going with all all the users so thank you to everyone today um thanks to omar thanks to matt and we hope to see you again on a future web uh webinar with the brain thanks everyone thank you take care